Would you share with us all of the whatever parts you think actually you would like to have admitted Absolutely. and published? Yes. There, I you, mean, can you do that from now on without me having to beg you to do that? Your Honor, the court does not have to beg me for anything. Okay. I, I mean, will... let's just have it be sort of a standard, which I thought would have been clear anyway, but is apparently not, that you make it clear to everybody what parts of what exhibits you want in evidence so that we can then, if there are evidentiary challenges to them, be able to sensibly discuss those. Is that something you can do for the court and for the opposing counsel in this case? Absolutely. Okay. So can you right now let us know so that while we're having our half hour, we can take a look at all of that? Sure can, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, y'all. Welcome or welcome back to Crime Chronicles. We're so excited you're here and would love for you to tap that like and subscribe button in order to become part of our crime-loving crew. Here at Crime Chronicles, we dive into all sorts of intriguing cases and even take requests for the mysteries you've been dying to know more about. Today's video will look a little bit different than usual, but without further ado, let's get into some of the recent times the courtroom has been absolutely fed up with Miss Love and was not afraid to let her know about it. Example 1. I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm just not. Judge, we, we are starting right now. It's 1.20. So, we have talked to them. We have said we don't agree. Then file a motion and get it before me and, and, we'll, and we'll take it up. Both of you, both, both of you all, both of you all have equally responsibility to do that. Oh, it's going to be inadmissible right now. You said to file a motion. I am not going to, I am not going to have any, I'm not going to have any more discussion about this, madam. I'm not. I don't, well, you know what? Well, then that's, yeah, well, that's why we have to. I'm not punishing anybody, but you know, pr but prior preparation prevents poor performance. Two weeks, I'm not, well, and I have asked, I have said I would like to discuss Our jury's coming in, madam. Our jury's coming in. Have a Example two. Okay, anyway, well, um, so how, how much longer are you going to have with this witness? Um, not, not an hour, about 30 minutes. 30 minutes more with this witness? Judge, 10, 15, I, I have about, I can count the questions for the court. Okay, again, this is redirect. I don't want you to count the questions. I just want you to stay focused. Do we have an answer to the question how long the next witness is away? Um, no, Your Honor. Okay, well, let's um, just continue with the redirect and then there may or may not be any recross and then we'll see if the witness is here yet and they better be I'm serious I know. okay so let's let's get the witness and get the jury example three my motion is a motion for mistrial uh, based on the actions of the prosecutor my my objection initially to the uh, to the the item was that it contained hearsay um the state represented at the bench that it was not hearsay. There was no hearsay contained in it. Uh, we did not address uh, the issue of what the state already knew, which is that there was a phone number attached to it that she was going to try to elicit um, testimony from this witness about who that phone number belonged to. Um, that in and of itself is speculation, but it's certainly hearsay. The document can't authenticate itself. I believe this, the site for that proposition is Twigs versus State. It's 315 Georgia Appeals 191. So you can't, this witness can't look at a document and say that uh, it says uh, this phone number uh, is from Justin Cobb's uh, Instagram or social media posting, this is who it belongs to. So that was my objection. I believe the objection was well-founded. I believe the state purposely put that up there uh, after misrepresenting as to whether or not it contained any hearsay in it. And based on that, I would move for a mistrial. May I respond? You may. Uh, Judge, the... Can somebody put the document up? 
Yes, yes. Would you put it there? First, the state objects to a mistrial. Second, Your Honor, what um, Mr. Adams uh, indicated that he did not want on here were um, the comments with respect. Where's the comment? There it is. Yeah. Okay. The comments generally being all of the writing on the right side of the picture. Your Honor. And so I said we, to you, is any of it hearsay? Is any of it being offered for the truth? And you said no. Your Honor, what I was asking the witness to do is to tell what was of significance to that number and what he did in terms of finding out and corroborating information that he obtained because he obtained phone records. I don't intend that this evidence or this exhibit will prove or show that this is Justin Cobb's phone number. You're asking it, him that? And asking no, him Your Honor. To testify I, to that? I'm asking him, and I understand the court, I'm asking him you, what handle it's next to and, Your Honor, what he did after seeing what he saw on this social media page. Asked. You represented at the bench that none of this that being the writing on the right side of the picture, which we're all squinting at because it's tiny on the piece of paper. And so I am relying upon you to actually be honest with the court and opposing counsel so that we can deal appropriately with the evidentiary issue. Was any of it being offered for the truth? And you said no. And then you turned around and after it was admitted over the overruling of the hearsay objection based on the representation that nothing was being offered for its truth. You drew the witness's attention to the phone number and tried to have the witness testify to whose phone number it was. If that is not offered for the truth, what is it? Your Honor, it what explains it? what he next, what steps he next took. It wasn't that he sat there and took this phone number and said, okay, this is Justin Cobb's phone number. He went and sought records based on what he saw on this social media post. So it's not, this post can't prove anything, but I do expect that the witness will testify based on what he saw, regardless, because this is a legitimate. Why can't you just add the bench when you know that the reason you're offering it is for the phone number and then to ask the witness other questions about what he did based on that phone number and seeing that phone number say, to everybody so that we know what we're dealing with. You know, it's this phone number, and then I'm going to ask him X, Y, Z about the phone number, and then we'll know what we're dealing with. Because my understanding that what was being objected to was not the phone number, was the comments, that <clears throat> was, the com was the words, Your Honor. And again, this piece of evidence does not prove anything, as anybody would be able to say. But when he saw this on Justin Cobb's page or a a picture of Justin Cobb next to what he believed to be Justin Cobb's handle. He sought additional information. The is entire the cross. Number <clears throat> with the comments? I'm sorry, what, Your Honor? I mean, that, that is included within what you're now calling comments, all of them just being. And I asked at the bench which, what comments they were asserting was hearsay, Your Honor. I, I literally and asked. And I that, asked at the bench, is any of this being offered for its truth? And, Your Honor, it's being offered to explain DDA Sprinkle's actions that he took next. But Your Honor, I, these records have been collected as part of what he did in this investigation. He was asked on cross-examination, did he take particular steps to corroborate what was given to him in certain interviews? That was the preceding question before I asked him about this particular post. So the state intended and intends to introduce the records that DDA Sprinkle produced or obtained after seeing this post. This post can't suffice to prove that that is Justin Cobb's number. This post only explains why DDA Sprinkle got the number and why it was significant to him in this investigation where his steps and actions are being questioned. But you know, Judge, we, we, don't, we don't get there. I, I, I hear what the state's saying, and it's disingenuous. We don't get to the second step that they're talking about, what records he procured <clears throat> and why he did what he did, unless we go through the hearsay statement that's contained in the portion that I objected to. And, and the, court is, the court is accurate. I, I was there. 
And I asked for everything that was on the right side, all of the verbiage to be, I said that that was hearsay. The state said it was not. It clearly is because to ask him that specific question, I mean, listen, none, none of us are, are, um, are obtuse. I asked. Here. It, I it, it, just... it, is, it is what it is. Um, I think that the state was disingenuous about it. The state's being very slippery in regards to their response to the court's questions. I think it's willful, and I think um, a mistrial is appropriate. And I'm asking I mean, for I can't one. figure out what it is. If it's disingenuous, if it is that, I mean, I don't, I don't want to malign the prosecutor standing in front of me right now. So I'm not going to say the possible things that it could be, but it is baffling to me that somebody with the number of years of experience that you have time after time after time, continues to seemingly purposefully hide the ball to the extent you possibly can for as long as you possibly can. And I really don't want to believe that it is purposeful, but honestly, after a certain number of times, you start to wonder how it could be anything but that, unless it is just that you are so unorganized that you are throwing this case together as you try it. And I am sorry to say that. Example four. Um, and I also, at this point, am going to admonish and rebuke you, Miss Love, uh, to pay careful attention to how you ask questions and to what you put before the jury. You should not have put that set of that factual rendition before the jury as anything that this witness admitted to at the time of the 2027 guilty plea. And I'm going to instruct you to refrain from asking improper questions. Yes, Your Honor. Example five. Being past that objection. Miss Love, I Can think I one thing respond? that... No, you need to listen. I think that one thing that needs to happen is when an objection is made and you are given an opportunity to respond and I make a ruling, even if that ruling is please clarify, that you then need to obey what my order is instead of continuing to argue. Your Honor, when I ask for um, clarification and consideration, I believe that as an advocate and as a person who is actually representing um, the victims who have been victimized in this case and who is representing as much as, an, as actually more than an officer of this court. And I represent something. I believe that the state has as much right to express, to request, and to ask for consideration and for an allowance to ask, ask the questions that it wishes to ask as the defense does. I believe, Your Honor, the objection that was made, and I understand what Mr. Shart said, but there are a couple of things at play here. One, Mr. Shart is well aware that Mr. Zachary has said that his client was with him. He has said it in the interview that I'm holding in my hand. He is not being honest with the court when he is claiming that Mr. Zachary had no idea what I was talking about. I literally said, Shannon, uh, Demikion, and Mutu, and I asked him how close he was with each of them. Right, and then we went from that to his girlfriend, and then it, it was not unreasonable, and the objection could just be, you know, vague, but it was not unreasonable to object to make sure that it was clear what the question was, who the they was in the question. And when I say clarify, that needs to be the end of it. And you need to ask a different question, rephrase the question, and let's move on. And there shouldn't Honor, be an issue the, with it. Yes, Your Honor. If, if the state is not allowed to ask for a clarification or consideration, that I, I, I understand. I don't know what you mean by that. Your Honor, when I ask... A clarification of my ruling? Is that what you mean? When I ask for permission beyond what the court has instructed, I did not know that I should not do that, so I won't do that anymore. That's not what was going on. You're basically, it seems to say, I'm asking permission to do something other than what the court has just ordered me to do. And so if that's what it is, then no, you cannot do that. If you need clarification of a ruling, then of course you can ask that. 
And if you want reconsideration, then you can ask for that. But that does not need to go on in front of the jury. When I make a ruling, obey the ruling and move on. All right, y'all, that wraps up today's video. But if you guys would like to see more of these types of videos, please comment down below to let me know so that we can make it happen. Also, if you haven't done so already, please tap that like and subscribe button for me and have a great day. Okay, love you. Bye.